we are going to make and play a game that uses some buttons so we can learn how to use buttons and also variables. I didn't create the game, actually Stu Lowe, who is a maker, educator, ed tech instructor over in Hong Kong did. So I just copied it from him, which is a great thing you do with the internet. You borrow things from people and mash them up. So here we go. Buttons. They have two, two ports. And really you just, uh, the button's just gonna make a connection between the two ports. So you see I got two alligator clips here, I got two alligator clips there, okay? One alligator clip needs to go to an actual a pin. I put one to pin one. The other needs to go to ground. Same thing with the other button. Um, this is going to pin two and the black is going to ground. That's how buttons work. Now, the code's a little bit more complex than what we've done so far. So let me walk you through the code. Um, I'll share the link to the actual code, which is a nice thing about make code is I can publish the code. I don't want to take time to build it and explain it here. Um, so here we go. On start, one, we have to make some variables. We need player one score, we need player two score, and we need a variable called game over. When you make variables, you just come to variables and say make variables and you name it, and then all of these boxes show up. And as you notice, these are drop-down menus. So underneath player two score here, so set player two score, there's also a line for player one score and for uh, game over. So on start, I wanna set everything to zero. Player scores, game over. Always initialize things. Um, next, grab a forever loop. And it, grab an if loop, and ifs are in the loops. And actually, the ifs are in the logic. I lied. If, and then some condition has to be true. We got to grab some conditioning here. Here's the conditioning. You bring in that conditioning, and you drop again, and then you bring game over into it. If game over equals zero. And I've said it to be, you know, it's, it's not game over yet. Plot the player score. And what we're doing is we're plotting the score. The player one score is going to go down the left column, leftmost column, and player two score is going to go down the rightmost column. We're just putting tick marks, basically, when they score. This is a reaction time game. We're going to play it to five because there's five tick marks. Um, we could play to six, and they would be fill up to five, and then on the sixth one, it would just go blank um, if you wanted to. So it plot the score. So plot at x0, y, player 1 score minus 1. Uh, the reason we're going to do the minus 1 is because this pixel right here is 0, 0. So if someone scores, that'd be a 1. Well, this is pixel 0, 1. I want it to put up here. So that's why I've got to subtract the 1 from the y value. Uh, same with player two score, except we're going to plot it over here at four, column four. Now here's the game part. Again, a forever loop. And I put comments in here. That's, in, that's a nice thing to start doing with your code is add comments. You right click on a block and you can duplicate, remove comment, or add comment. Uh, delete blocks and look for help. Uh, I'm going to pause what's happening randomly. And I said, pick some random number. So again, find, you know, pick random number. Uh, I'm not sure where I got that from right now. Uh, again, you gotta, you, you look around, uh, you look around stuff and you find, where is random? Maybe it's under advanced. Well, I can't remember right now, but we gotta find it. And the color code, so I kind of make so I'm not going to look in the green for a pick random number. So pick a random time to pause between two and ten seconds, and then toggle x2, y2. Toggle this middle dot on because it should be off. Um, and that's the game. When that happens, when that happens, if Point x2 is on again we're back to ifs we're back to bringing in conditionals 
Um, if that is on and pin one is pressed, change player one score by one, toggle that pixel off. Otherwise, so I've got this other thing forever. If that point is on and pin two is pressed, then change player two score and toggle that off. This part here is just a reset button. Uh, when you press button A, reset the game. Here's how, uh, and it just, you keep doing that. Up the player score. And here's the final way to know if we win. These two blocks are the same. One's just for player one, one's for player two. If player one score equals five, set game over to one. Tell it game's over. And then show these LEDs that are making an arrow flash to the left for player one. Um, this is just saying, hey, if player two equals five, set came over to one, toggle that thing off, and show LEDs which flash an arrow to the right. Um, the reason we're looking at this is just to get buttons going and to start looking at some variables and some if statements. Um, we're also looking because you know now we have we can't really plug much more into our micro bit, and that would lead us to the next step. So play your game and have some fun.